Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to the Valberg Calvary. This is also known as the Path of the Cross, or the Way of the Cross, and it's on the trail up to the old castle above Smlednik. Now, you may have seen in one of my uh, previous vlogs that I took you to a location where we could photograph the old castle above Smlednik from a distance with Storzic right behind. Well, in this video, we're going to go up to the castle itself, stand on top of the castle and photograph the magnificent view that you get from the top of the castle itself. Now I came up here a week or two ago with my family for the first time to scout this location and I got a couple of really good shots while I was there. And so it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to walk. You can drive to the top actually. Uh, it's a gravel road, but it's, it's, it's in pretty good condition, so if you want, you can drive to the top. But it's also a nice walk, as you can see. It's a, a nice little walk up through this way of the cross, and then along that gravel road for a bit, until you get to the very top. Okay, so let's head on up there now. I'll show you some of the footage I shot that when I went up with my family, and then we'll see the view, spectacular view, from the top.
the airport. Now because I'm uh, photographing distant mountains, I'm using my Canon L-Series 100-400mm lens and I'm also putting on the Case K9 filter holder for when I use an ND grad later and this filter holder also comes with a magnetic polarizer. Now the polarizer is useful for cutting through the haze. Well here I am set up on the castle walls right at the very top with the best view and it seems that the castle cat has taken a liking to my camera bag and seems to think it's its new bed And his friend, or brother, or sister, has also come along for a piece of the action. As you can see, the castle wall is a precarious place to photograph from, so if you decide to come up here, be very, very careful. It's a long fall down. Down below, there's a nice little cafe where you can sit and have something to eat and enjoy the view from a safer place. Just down there. Or you can come and sit on the walls here and enjoy the view from the highest point altogether. Over there is Shmanagora. Now, over there just below that mountain, the Twin Peaks there, is where I stood to take the photo of uh, Smlednik Castle with Stojic right behind. So if you see right the way over there, if I'm standing there, then we turn 180 degrees very carefully because I'm on the edge of the wall, it's a long drop. There in the distance you can see Stojic. So perspective is everything. The most important part about photography. It's all about where you stand. Now it's easy to say that we could go down there where it's a much safer position and take our photos from there. But actually if you go down there there are more trees in the way and it's slightly lower. This higher perspective gives you a much better overall picture and it also gives you clearance from most of the trees except this one of course and most of all the other objects houses buildings things that you don't want in your composition this view from here is spectacular it's not such a clear day today it's a bit hazy but check out the b-roll from two weeks ago when I came up here when it was much clearer and it was a beautiful, beautiful evening. So check that out now.
was up here a couple of weeks ago, I scouted this area and I found three great compositions. I'll show you these compositions now. The first composition is of the church down there. Now I photographed that church from the bottom actually. It's the little church in the village of Harashe. And right behind it are the main part of the Kamni Kalps with Grinzovets and all the other mountain peaks. Now there's a nice composition. It's a bit tight and it's quite difficult. You need the zoom lens but you can get right in close and get the the mountains and the church itself. So I'll show you the picture I took from that a couple of weeks ago. The next composition is Storjic itself. Now from here there's a nice composition of Storjic and that big like open bit of field there. Again it's quite a tight composition but uh, I managed to get it two weeks ago. And now both cats have uh, taken up camp in my camera backpack. Now the sun is going down behind me right over those mountains there and hopefully when that sun goes down then uh, we might start to see some colour over the mountains. Over there is Mount Triglav and the line of electricity pylons giving us a beautiful lead-in line up to the mountain itself. Now from this position here where I'm standing that row of pylons is perfectly straight but if I head down this way to the other end of the castle wall it may not seem far it's maybe just a few meters but it makes a massive difference to the composition as I'll show you now. So if we walk down here towards the flag itself it's not that far, the sun's setting now, beautiful. If we zoom in, we haven't moved that much, but that row of uh, pylons is no longer perfectly straight. And it has ruined the, the symmetry of the whole composition. Now sometimes it's not always easy to see that when you're on the small screen. So for that reason, well, I'm, when I buy a small screen, I mean the small screen on your camera. So for that reason, when I was up here two weeks ago, I took two photos just to be sure. I just kind of suspected this was the case, but I took two photos, one from down there and one from here. And it's clearly, once you get it on the big screen, you can see the difference. Now I put each of these pictures up one by one, and then I put them side by side uh, up here now. So you can see for yourself the difference it makes. It hasn't turned out too bad. It was better a couple of weeks ago but we've got a nice bit of cloud over there and now the sun's gone down the, the light is a little bit better. Before it was too hazy and when the sun was up the, the sun was lighting that haze too much. Now the one problem you get with standing right on top of a hill like this, an open hill. It's very exposed. Of course, it's very windy. 
and um, it gives you a bit of a problem when you're doing long exposures, especially with a long telephoto lens like this. The more you extend it, the more sensitive it is. Now it's not such a big deal that I get a long exposure because there's no real big movement in the clouds today. But of course the light is low now and I've got a polarizing filter on there in order to, to uh, cut out the haze a bit. And I've got a three stop ND grad on there. So all of that is reducing the amount of light coming in and making it quite difficult to get a fast shutter speed. Thankfully the wind is gusty which means that I can usually wait a little bit for the wind to drop. There you go. So that's the trick. There'll be a slight change to my vlogs from now on. Somebody pointed out that while it's interesting seeing uh, the places that I go and the photographs that I take, it would also be interesting to see the whole process, what I do with the photos, uh, how I edit them, how I choose which pictures I like the best, how I process those pictures, and then what I do with them after that. Now, most of us, well, all of us, are uh, into photography because we love it. And first and foremost, we're doing it for the passion. But also, many of us, like myself, are also doing it as a profession. I'm trying to make money out of photography. So in which case, of course, I'm not only am I looking to get great pictures, I'm also looking to get photos that I can sell. So what we'll do from now on is that we'll We'll also look at processing the photos and then I'll show you how I choose which photos I will put up for sale and where I sell them, actually. So, it's getting a bit chilly up here now. So, I'm going to head back down and uh, we'll go into the computer and go on to part two. So here we are. These are the photos that I took on the second visit and this is usually what I do when I've been out and had a photo shoot. I come back, I load all of the photos from that shoot into an images to process folder. I give it the name of the location and I give it the date so I know because often as you can see I've got several from the same location. I revisit these locations and I, I go at different times. So by putting the dates there, it helps me keep track of the. So the first thing I do is I open, go into my raw folder and I view them all in Windows Explorer. And this way I can very quickly have a scroll through like this, quick preview, and try to pick out which images I think are the best. So. If we look down here, yeah, these are some of the images I took when the sun, after the sunset, so there was a bit of color and that haze was dampened a bit. It wasn't so bright and intense. And I think these last ones are some of the best. This was a nice shot. I've already processed this. The shots of Rasha were not really that good. Uh, there was too much haze and I got a much better one previously, as you saw. So really I'm interested in these pictures here. These ones are the best. It's not the greatest. The one I shot two weeks ago is much, much better. But out of all of these, I think these ones here. And what I particularly like here, I think, is this bit of cloud framing a Triglav here. This is Mount Triglav. This is the highest peak in Slovenia. So this little bit of cloud each side. So I've got several. And I'm going to look really, because they're all pretty much the same. So what I'm interested in here is how that cloud is raking itself around Triglav itself. And I think it's between these two, really. This one, I think I like this one the best. So when I've selected that, I'll right click. I'll go to open with and I'll open this in Adobe Photoshop. I use Adobe Photoshop. I do not use Lightroom at all. But this is no big deal. If you use Lightroom, you use Lightroom. But I personally, I've used Photoshop from the beginning. So I open that raw. So the raw, here we can see it's opened in the raw image converter. 
automatically and my default settings are usually Adobe Vivid and if we come down optics I've always got this from remove chromatic aberration ticked it's always ticked it's ticked by default so I never have to worry about that so I go up here to vivid and then I usually I start with vivid but if I think uh, it's overdoing it if it's oversaturated or something then I may have a play with some of the other presets Adobe color Adobe landscape Adobe standard so usually sometimes Adobe Landscape or Adobe Vivid sometimes though that landscape gives you very unnatural colors so I don't always use it but in this case it's actually not too bad so I might start with Adobe Landscape and I shot this image on the cloudy white balance so I could warm up the scene a bit more and so I leave it at that I think sometimes I go and I, I might have a go at the shade or take it back to as shot now that's one of the advantages of shooting in raw we, we can tweak the white balance when we're processing so I kind of like that and first thing I'll do is I'll come down here to the highlights I'll pull back these highlights a bit bring back some of that definition in the sky now we've got a bit of a gap here obviously because it was hazy so we can pull back the blacks a bit not too much I think pull up the whites a bit bring out some of that foreground that's good dehaze tool because it's hazy so the dehaze tool might work a bit here I never pull it too far because it sometimes overdoes it so I think 10 is about right let's add a touch of clarity now the clarity slider affects some of the larger parts of the image makes them really stand out the texture slider affects some of the small details if you've got buildings it works well but it also work can work well on mountains and usually what I do is I zoom in and I see if the texture slider can have any effect now it's a bit hazy so it's not going to have that much of an effect but I usually tweak it just a touch and I bring up the vibrance so I take the vibrance to about 10 here and I think that's about it for these controls now Adobe Camera Raw, the new version, has the curves within it, so that's really great. But to be honest, I, I rarely use it here. Uh, I use it, I actually open it to Photoshop and do the curves there. So that's about it. I don't spend lots and lots of time processing my image. So if it needs a lot of work, then I usually just bin it. So it's quite simple. So now that's done, I'm going to open it into Photoshop. There we go. Now you can see the difference between the one I shot two weeks ago and the one I shot here. Once I've opened it to Photoshop, then I'll usually do a few tweaks here in Photoshop. So I'll go to Image, Adjustments, and I usually do a bit more because the Highlights tool in Photoshop is much, much better too. So I usually give it a tweak in the RAW converter, but then I usually do a bit more here. So sometimes the highlights tool here will help give us a little bit more definition in the sky itself and as I said I use the curves tool here rather than in uh, the raw converter so I may just tweak the overall contrast a bit by tweaking these pulling up and down these two sections here so that's that's I think that's improved this image dramatically it has really made the row of pylons pop out a bit more uh, the mist down here the contrast adjustment has helped to focus our attention on these areas it's darkened down the mountains and the hills a bit more and it's really made that sky pop so I think this is nice this is good enough so I'll save it now I save all my images as a TIFF I have a folder for TIFFs so in my folder I have a raw folder and I have a TIFF folder so I always save them as TIFFs like this no compression at all because I might want to go back and work on this now the reason I don't go back and work on the raw is because I've made some adjustments in Photoshop plus what I'm about to do now I can't I don't want to have to do again so the next step is to scan your image for dust spots so I go up here to the healing brush and I scan 
my sky in particular because dust spots always show up in the sky more so my sensor is pretty clean I had it cleaned not too long ago uh, so it's not too bad and when you're doing long exposures too you also have to look out for hot pixels especially when it's uh, dark but there, I didn't really do there you go there's one little hot pixel there you see the red one so we're going to use the healing brush tool to get rid of that or sometimes you've got birds in flight in the sky which are blurred because the exposure was a bit longer so you want to get rid of them so there's another little hot pixel there so this is the laborious part of it and hence you don't want to have to repeat it now here you go look I got a bit of uh, um, motion blur there on a moving car so I want to get rid of that first of all I'll try the healing brush tool see if it does a good enough job or if that doesn't work I'll undo all that I'll come in and I'll use the clone tool it's got a bit of a line there that's better now, I don't do lots of cloning because I'm first of all not that good at it and I really also can't be bothered so now let's go back sorry to finish that there's that last little bit down the bottom just to check now the other thing also when zooming in now what you do is you right click and you view at hundred percent and that what you're doing here is you're viewing your image at the native resolution of your screen and that's the maximum you can go to without blurring if we zoom in one more we start to get blurring and pixelization pixelation sorry so hundred percent is the native resolution and that way you can also check to make sure everything's sharp because as I said it was windy and the problem there is that you know the slightest um, because I'm using a long telephoto lens it's very sensitive to any kind of vibration and the, f and the exposure was although it wasn't long it wasn't super fast either so by zooming in at 100% I can scan my image to make sure that everything is nice and sharp I've got no motion motion blur at all so that's perfect so that's that done again I'll save that and now my image is complete now the final thing and also very important is to go to file info and fill in all your metadata information description document title and keywords this is the most important part because that will be imported into your descriptions and keywords and everything when you put the images up for sale so I usually keep a bunch of templates now as I've shot this before I saved the template from when I did it so it saves me a hell of a lot of time so I go to Julian Alps Sunset Smlednik and I automatically import the same one from before so all those keywords are the same and I can just simply click OK and then I save and that's my TIFF finished now what I do is to save it as a JPEG so to do that I take it from 16 bits because my TIFF is 16 bits I'll switch it to 8 bit and I usually come down here and I convert I, my TIFFs and everything is in Adobe RGB but for the JPEG I convert it to sRGB because then when I upload it to the places that I'm going to sell it shows better on the internet when it's displayed on the um, on my profile and in my galleries so if I ever need to send a JPEG in Adobe RGB I can easily make another one from the TIFF so I've got two that's why I keep two and then I save as then go to my main part of my gallery here switch it to JPEG and save it JPEG 12 maximum and that's my image complete so now that's the only one really I'm going to pick for the shoot for now 
the other one of the the way of the cross I'll probably process that and use that as a stock image but I won't put it up for sale as a wall art print so when I, when I sell my pictures I sell them as wall art and here are the places where I sell them I've got several actually quite a few but the main ones really I focus on uh, Fine Art America Photo for Me which is in the UK and Redbubble which is based in Australia I believe then there's Alamy when it comes to stock the only place I sell stock is on Alamy it's I'd say the best of a bad bunch they're all pretty bad but Alamy is probably the one that will give you the best income they give you 50% commissions and for the most part their images sell at a fairly good price but even then over the years when I first started with Alamy we they used to pay used to get very good sales and they used to give you I think 80% commission that's dwindled to 50 and some of the sale prices have also dwindled too so it's the nature of stock photography and it's really why I don't bother sending or uh, uploading lots and lots of images to lots of stock sites Alamy is the only one I use so some of these images will go on Alamy then I will put some on my own website so on my own website I have galleries and I have in this case for these images um, I've got mountains so in my galleries here I only put what I consider to be my best photos that doesn't mean that if a photo is if a photo is good it's quality it's good enough for sale I will put it up for sale on Fine Art America and all these other places but I won't necessarily highlight it on my own website so only some I will put on here but each of these on my main website I've got two websites actually I've got a website with WordPress this is my own website and the reason I have WordPress is I can really really do so much more with it and I have other WordPress sites because I do web design and various other things too but I also have a smug mug website and the smug mug website is also great because uh, I can sell directly through smug mug WordPress site I link my images for sale to my fine art America site now I won't go too much into this now I'll put a link up now to a, a video where I show you how and why I do this each image if you click and open it's got a purchase button and if I click this purchase button it takes you here to my personal pixel site which is part of Fine Art America if you have a Fine Art America paid account you get this personal pixel site now the advantage to this of course is that um, anyone who comes here will only ever see your photos for example if I change this now it's it's exactly the same only difference is the URL I've also got the same image and the same galleries and everything on Fine Art America but if you come to Fine Art America they're on the main site and it also means that people can browse and view other people's images for sale which you don't want so the images I choose couple of the images the ones I think are best will go up here on my WordPress site and they'll also go up on my smug mug site now with smug mug not only can I sell these photos as wall art prints I can also sell them as digital downloads and another thing about smug mug is that every image you upload is stored on the server and it acts as uh, cloud storage effectively for your photos so you can upload the full resolution images and use it as external cloud storage and also what's really useful is that if for example somebody is browsing my WordPress website now I'm a WordPress website I upload low resolution images not high resolution images so if somebody is browsing my WordPress website and they see a picture they like that they want to license for use in a magazine or editorial or advertising then maybe they will email me and ask and, and we were to negotiate a license and they would pay for that license now if I happen to be away traveling it could be difficult for me to well almost impossible for me to access my external hard drive at home to get the high-resolution image to send to them but if I have it on smug mug 
then I can very easily send them a download link from my SmugMug website where they can download the full resolution image straight away. So that's why it's very, very useful to also have the SmugMug website. So uploading to SmugMug is very easy. If I'm logged in already, I can go directly to this big green upload button and I can choose to upload into a new gallery if I want to create a new gallery or in this case an existing gallery. And then I select the gallery where I want to upload it. So in this case, I'm going to put these images in my mountains gallery click done and then just simply there are several ways that you can do it I'm going to take it straight off my computer so I'll select one and shift to select all three open they will start uploading I will then go back do my other one and select that one now all, all four of these are now uploading and they'll upload straight into the gallery and when that's done let's click that cross now if I refresh my mountains gallery and scroll down they'll be at the bottom and they're automatically made available for sale so if I click an image then people get these purchase options and they also get a download I get a download option because I'm logged in of course but if you uh, want to offer it available as a digital download then you can set that up I won't go into too much detail about that but if you're interested in smug mug yourself then go check out some of my other videos about how to set up your uh, smug mug how to get started how to set up galleries and various things like that I'll put a link to a playlist with all those videos down in the description uh, if you are interested in setting up a smug mug website yourself I am an affiliate so uh, there's a, an affiliate link down in the description which will also give you a 15% discount if you decide to purchase a smug mug plan so um, go check that out I'm conscious that this video has gone on quite long already so I've already uploaded the images to Fine Art America so they're all here now also photo for me they're all here my smart red bubble it's all done now Alame, I won't upload them now because I tend to create a folder I put everything into a folder and then I do one big upload to Alame because I if there's stuff on Alame I will put up which I wouldn't put up for sale for wall art so stock is a very different kettle of fish so to speak and also on my own website my WordPress website they're now available I've uploaded there so the same thing now I've set it up already that someone clicks this clicks the purchase button they go straight through to my Fine Art America page where they can purchase the image there well I hope you've enjoyed this new approach to my vlogs and I'd be interested to hear what you think so please let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you have any ideas anything any ideas that you have please please let me know okay in another in the next vlog we'll look more maybe at the fine art america side of things um, i don't want to go through all of it now because this vlog has already gone on too long okay so thanks for watching as always and uh if you if you're first time here then i'd be very grateful if you subscribe please give this video a like and check out some of my other videos too okay thanks for watching and catch you later Bye bye